The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. In Torah Vedas, there was a great Rosh Yeshiva. His name was Rabbi Avram Pam. Certainly many of you heard of him and some of you saw him and knew who he was. He was a very kind, caring, soft person. The softest person you could imagine. He wrote a Sefer. He once gave me the Sefer. It's called Atara Lamelech. It's a very wonderful Sefer to learn because it's written in Ivrit Kala. It's written in a very simple Hebrew. He told me that that Sefer was edited eight different times. He told me there's not one extra word in the whole book. That's how careful he was before he let it out to print. And on page 120, he tells a story that you could see between the lines how embarrassed he is to tell this story. And he tells a story that happened in 1976. He was on a vacation with his wife in New Hampshire. That's where he used to go in the summer. And it was the last day before they were going to come back to New York. It was late in the afternoon. His wife, they were already packed up. They were going to go back the next day. And all of a sudden, he felt that he was going to faint. He felt dehydrated. And he felt that he had to have a citrus fruit. He had to have something to drink. So he said to his wife, is there anything to drink? I need a citrus fruit to give me some, some, something in my body. I, I'm, I feel like dehydrated. I'm going to faint. She didn't have anything. So she went to the next door neighbor. The only thing that the next door neighbor had was a lemon. A bitter lemon, but she had no choice. So she runs and she gives her husband a lemon. And Rapam writes that he ripped open the lemon. He said, Mama, she could see how embarrassed he never did anything. I ripped open the lemon, sucked out the juices. And he was okay. He didn't faint. So a couple days later, he writes, that he saw one of his sons. A problem had three three boys. So he saw one of his sons, and he said, you know what happened a couple days ago? I I felt so dehydrated, and I felt I was going to faint. And I said to Mama, I need uh, citrus fruit. And she gave me a lemon. I ripped it open. I never saw anybody rip open something like that. Then he says, we think. As I was talking to my son, I talk remember, I once saw somebody do that. And he tells a story that happened with him 20 years earlier. 20 years earlier, he says that there was a rough in the Bronx. He doesn't say who the rough was. And the rough was very sick and he was in a hospice. He was dying. And Rapam went to visit him. So what do you bring a man who's dying? What, what, what could you bring him? What kind of gift could you bring him? So figure, they'll bring him some fresh oranges. Maybe he wants some oranges to, to have to eat. But the man was not in the mood. So Rapam writes, but this Rav had a, a, a roommate. And this roommate, Nebuch, was already paralyzed from the waist down. He could move his hands, but he couldn't talk. So Rapam saw that his friend didn't want the oranges. So he turned to him and said, maybe you would like the oranges? And the poor guy was so hungry and so thirsty, he grabbed the oranges. He couldn't even say thank you because he couldn't talk anymore. And he ripped it open. And he started sucking out the juices. And Rapam says... Really, I did a wonderful thing for that man. He was so hungry, he was so starving, and I gave him these oranges. Hashem should have paid me right away. But Hashem waited. Hashem waited 20 years until I needed a sutra's fruit. And that's when he made sure that I got the lemon. And listen to what he writes. This should be a chizuk for every single one of us. And this is written by the Or HaChayim HaKadosh. Now the Or HaChayim HaKadosh is learned every Shabbat. It's learned by all the Hasidim. And I learned something very interesting this year. This past year I was in Morocco. And when I was preparing for my trip in Morocco, I realized, which I never knew, that the Or HaChayim was a Sephardi. He was born in Morocco. It was only... It was, uh, you were born in Morocco? You could be, oh no, but anyway, but he was born in Morocco. In, 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 in Sali, right next to the town where we were, in Rabat. It was only that he was so close to the Baal Shem Tov, and I'll tell you a great story about him and the Baal Shem Tov in a minute, that people said, of the Baal Shem Tov said that the, the Orachayim HaKadosh was such a tzaddik, so every all the Chassidim started learning the Orachayim HaKadosh. But otherwise, but otherwise he was a true Sparty. So what happened is, listen to what my prom quotes from the Orachayim HaKadosh. He writes in Parshas Yisroi in Shemois and Aser Sadibrois on the Posik Shemois Chov Posik Vov. Va'oisa Chesed La'alofim La'oyavai Alashemer Mitzvois. And he writes like this: Ein Hakadosh Baruch Hu Meshalim Le'Kol Chazdei Take it from Yad. Hashem does not pay you back right away when you do a good thing. Ela Boicha Le'Oifin Piroyan. Hashem waits 
to pay you back sometimes even generations later. He pays back to that grandchild of yours or that great-grandchild that needs it. How many times have we been driving on the highway? And you see you're going to get in the accident. You could mamish feel the impact. And the last second, you stop on a dime. And you don't get into the accident. How did that happen? You know why? Because 40 years ago, your grandmother did something special. And Hashem said, I'm not going to waste a, waste a vacation on her. I'm not going to let her have an SUV. I'll wait till her grandson is on the highway. And he needs to be saved. That's when I'm going to pay her back. How many times does it happen? That the kid, he didn't go on that number one bus that blew up. How did that kid not go? He was going to go. The last second he decided to go back to the yeshiva to get a book that he forgot. Who made him forget that book? Hashem, you know why? Because 35 years ago, his grandfather did something special. And Hashem said, oh, that grandfather, I'm going to do something special for him. I'm not going to give him a second home you know, up in the mountains, in the Kesha village or wherever, in the fancy places. No, no, no. I'm going to wait till his grandson is an Eretz Yisrael. And I'm going to make sure that he's saved. So when you look around at your neighbor, and you see that your neighbor has many wonderful things that you think they have, and you say, how come Hashem, why not me? Don't be silly. Hashem's not wasting a vacation in Orlando on you. He's not paying you back all these, you know, to these fancy vacations. Hashem is waiting. Oh, when that child or that grandchild or that great-grandchild needs that shidduch or needs that job, that's when I'm going to pay him back. So don't be despondent. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire dot org.